My name is Charlie White. Can you hear me now? I can hear you loud and clear, sir. The man that gave me this medal, his name was Henry J. Weiser, and we called him Bud. So when I put his rumpus room in for him in his house, I got a sign from Budweiser Beer, and that was in his rumpus room. The narrative quality of my work is the most important aspect, and it's very strange because I always think I'm not going to find it. It's a scary moment to begin something, and I never know where I'm going to end up. Piece by piece, something begins to happen. I think for all artists, it's a great moment of trusting yourself. I think the piece chatter, when I was looking at it today, I thought, this piece is the most me piece I've ever made. So every year for Going back, I think 15 years, correct me if I'm wrong, we've done Rebuilding Together's uh, Rebuilding Day in San Francisco, and I've participated for the last four years, so it's a fun day to get out and just volunteering in the community. It's just a nice way to spend some time with people you work with, help things out. Here in San Francisco at the Seneca Hotel, uh, we're essentially helping to repaint the inside of the hotel. It's a single resident occupancy property, and so a lot of uh, it's designed for homeless people, transitional housing for folks who may have addiction problems or essentially looking for a roof over their head. And so we're here on the fifth floor repainting the entire floor. So the trim, the paint, the walls, um, essentially the entire floor to really clean it up so it's a nice place to live. And then once we leave, they're going to come through and tear out all this carpet and lay down all new tiles. It's going to be really Really, really nice, and to be out here with all of our coworkers, making an impact for people who are less fortunate, it really makes you feel good. Before I went to art school, I fell into working for a couple painters, and I worked for a painter named Sam Francis, who, little did I know, is a legendary, very big abstract expressionist painter. That one of the kind of like Richard Diebenkorn in that way, where. Uh, silent with a big stick really really made a huge mark in the art world but, but uh, forego New York so he was you know he was he wasn't part of the big uh, big press he turned out to be a, a real mentor for me I'm not a rancher I couldn't tell you the first thing about taking care of a cow I have never actually gone out on the ranch and taking care of cattle. I just, I quite frankly, I have no interest in it. It's not me, it's not who I am. But I am truly passionate about our business and I'm truly passionate about um, running our business in a way that's right for the environment and right for people that are eating our meat and for consumers and right for our family. And, um, and even though I'm not a rancher and even though you know that huge part of the business is really just not me, I still feel very much a part of it, and it does still feel very personal to me. And, it, and it's definitely happened over time, you know, where at some point it felt like, oh, this is ours, where, you know, instead of, oh, this is Lauren's and I'm his wife. And it definitely was a gradual transition. Most people now go to tend to be more on the conservative side, uh, not really willing to change readily, but. Uh, Lauren is kind of looking at the future, and he's got a lot of great ideas, and uh, uh, it's really interesting working with a guy like that, and I find it very challenging because uh, a lot of his ideas are very innovative and uh, progressive, and really, you have to change what the public public wants, and he's tended to adapt to that, and I think, I think it's the right approach, and I really think he's going to be successful at it. I've always been an active part of the business as far back as I can remember. When I moved away to college, Cal Poly, when I was 18 years old, I bought my first 20 heifers. As I kept going through college, those animals, I would sell the babies off and that would pay for my schooling. So I was in, I had skin in the game. I would come home every, every weekend that I could and help on the ranch and make business decisions and management decisions and pick, pick out the sires 
all that type of thing. And then we kind of just went on a cruise control for a few years while I worked some other jobs in the ag industry. And uh, I guess it's seven years ago now, my wife and I were living in Sacramento and I was coming over here almost every weekend doing work on the ranch. And I have this driving passion for the ranch and what we're doing here. And I said, you know what, Lee, we really have to move home. If I don't try and make this ranch go and be profitable, I'm, I'm gonna have an empty void in my stomach for the rest of my life. 